Hi, I'm Midnight Mule and today I thought I'd talk about face blindness. Face blindness is a disorder which means it's difficult or impossible to recognise people from their faces. And it's something that um, I'm, I have this, but I didn't realise until a few years ago that I was like this. As in, I was unaware that other people were not like this. Uh, I found out this week that face blindness has a proper word, which is prosopagnosia. The prosop part of the word means face, and agnosia means uh, inability to recognise things. Put them together, prosopagnosia. So it's probably the best way to explain what it's like is to give a few anecdotes that I can think of during my life and maybe putting all the pieces together, it may help you to understand a bit what it's like. Now, not all Aspies have face blindness and there are plenty of people that are face blind that are not Aspies. But it's my understanding that people who are Aspie are more likely to have this than neurotypicals. So the first memory that I can attribute to possibly face blindness is when I was, I'm going to guess about seven, we used to live on the south coast of West Sussex and one day, I was in bed at the time, but somebody pulled up outside our house towing a yacht and they knocked on the door and my dad answered and they had a flat tyre on the trailer and they wanted to know if my dad could help, uh, if he had any tools to help changed the tyre and it happened my dad didn't but then the next morning the trailer was still there and it was difficult for my dad to get in and out of the drive so after a couple of days he contacted the local police to say that someone stumped a trailer and it turned out that it was a stolen yacht from Princeton which was just down the road there were lots of yachts there and so the a police officer came round and he had a photo fit album which is where you get all the different parts of a face and you stick them together to try and identify the person who had the trailer in this case. And I remember thinking at the time, I've got no idea how my dad can look at these parts, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the hair, etc., and put them together. I thought, there's no way I could do that. I couldn't even do it without a reference material. I couldn't do a picture of myself or my mum or my dad or my siblings. I'd have no chance. And I was astonished that somebody could do a photo fit. But I thought nothing of it. I, I just thought it was amazing. But I'm also aware that people do photo fits all the time. And that's always blown my mind. Going on a bit, I remember in my teenage years, sometimes my family would go away on holiday and I'd stay at home, which suited me and it suited them because obviously the holiday was a bit cheaper. And when they'd come back after a week or so, I'd open the door to them. And intellectually, I would know it was them, the right count number of people. But I didn't really recognise them and they always looked very strange to me. But I would just carry on as if it was them and I assumed it was them. But that was, it was strange. If I hadn't seen somebody for a while, it was always like there were strangers to look at. But intellectually, I knew it, it was the person. Going on a bit more, we have three children. They're uh, two or three years apart part for each of them and we used to take them to a nursery I used to maybe drop them off at the nursery on the way to work and I might pick them up at lunchtime the trouble was I didn't know which child was mine now they all had blonde hair when they were younger so I knew those with auburn hair or dark hair they wasn't one of my kids but if there are another two or three children with similar hair I, I didn't know which one was mine. If I made a mental note to think, right, it's the one in the blue and, right, blue and white striped jumper, for example, I'd look for a kid in the right clothes. But often, I wouldn't think to remember the clothes. So what I used to do, I'd go to nursery and I'd wait for one of the children to come up to me and if it ticked enough boxes in my head visually, I'd think, oh yeah, that's my child. And then I could happily take it. But if they were all sleeping, then... I wouldn't be confident which one was mine. And then going on a little bit, when the girls were old enough to go to brownies, that was even worse. So although they were, I don't know what age brownies is, might it be eight till 10, seven till 10, something like that. All the girls there wear the same uniform. So I'd go to pick them up and it's even harder because they there would invariably be several girls with the same rough length blonde hair all wearing the same clothes 
I just have to stand there and wait for one of them to come up to me and say, hey, dad. And I think, yeah, that's 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 my girl. And then I can start talking and taking that one home. But again, if they were like, if they're unconscious, then it would be a lot harder for me to be sure which one was mine, which is a horrible thing to say. And I've often thought if a family member or a friend uh, was dead and had to identify them, I would find that really hard. And I wouldn't be, I don't think there's anybody I'd be 100% sure that, oh yeah, that is my relative or friend. I could say, mm, it does look like them, but I, I really wouldn't know. There was um, a case the first time we went to a a church of Scotland. We lived in Edinburgh for a while. We sat there and there was a minister at the front, did the whole service, uh, did the sermon. Very good talk because he was always very good at his talks. I always enjoyed them. And afterwards, typically you'd go out the back, have a tea and a coffee. So we did that. It was our first week there. And the minister came up and started making small talk. Hi, how are you? What do you do, etc.? And I gave the standard answer and I said, um, and what is it you do? And he said, I'm the minister. I've been the one up on the uh, stage the last hour. And I was like, oh, are you? OK. And I didn't know. I didn't recognise him, despite the fact I've been looking at him for the last hour or so. And it, it's just these small little things. You just just don't get them. There are, generally speaking, if I see somebody out of context that I know there's a good chance I will not recognise them. So I, I do sometimes warn people, maybe at the local chess club I go to or other people I meet, and we seem to be getting on well, I'll say to them, look, just so you know, if I see you, for example, at the supermarket, I may not acknowledge you. And that's because I don't know who you are. And the reverse is sometimes true. Sometimes I'll be a bit confident and think, oh, that's, that's John over there. I'll go and say hello to John. I'll start a conversation and it's a total stranger. And I mistook them for somebody that I thought I did know. And so it's really quite bizarre. But I need to say of all the disorders that could be associated with Asperger syndrome, this is possibly the one that's the least troublesome. I, It doesn't bother me that I have trouble recognising people. I just, I'm just aware I don't recognise people. It could be at work, maybe at work, there might be about 40 or 50 people in the office. But some people that I don't interact with very often, if they were sitting somewhere else, I wouldn't necessarily know if it's them or not. And we're supposed to challenge people coming into the office if we don't recognise them, they've not got a badge. Obviously, we shouldn't open doors for them. They need to sign in as a guest. I wouldn't necessarily know if that person worked there or not, even though I may see them several times a week. So that's that's a bit strange. So I... If I tried to remember somebody, I would need to, I don't know, look for maybe certain features and try and think like that person has a mark on their face in that position. If I see that, that person's John. There may be that sort of thing I can do, but I'm, for some reason, the various features just, they're not distinctive. And yet something I can do, if I maybe I'm bored on a train or something or somewhere else, there's several people around, if I see two or three people together, I can look at them and I will quickly scan their eyes, nose, ears, and I will look for similarities and try and work out if I think they're related or not. And so if I see two people that maybe look like adults and a third person might be a child, I'll do a quick scan and see if I can match the child's features to the parents. And if I can match up enough on both sides, I think, oh, yeah, it's both there. It's a child of both of theirs. But sometimes you can see the features only match one of them. In which case I think, ah, oh, the other one's maybe a step parent or something like that. That's just something to pass the time because my mind's always active. Um, now, if people, I also have trouble with people's names, which I don't think is anything to do with face blindness. But if when I met people, rather than give me their name, they gave me their date of birth, I could probably remember them much better. But that tends not, tends not to be the case with people. Something I read today in the New Scientist is apparently there's something called hair blindness. And if that exists, I've got it. And this is where somebody you know well changes their hair and you just don't notice. And there's been a few times in the past my wife's gone to the hairdresser, done something radically different, and I've not commented on it. And it's because I don't notice it. And of course, she would, this is before we knew I was Aspie. 
she would then be slightly hurt that she spent 40 quid doing whatever and I made no comment. So a few years ago, I made a deal with one of my daughters and I said, if mummy ever gets anything done to her hair, tell me so I can tell mummy, oh, that looks nice. And so since then, there's only one time my daughters forgot to tell me. And of course, it can sometimes backfire. If I don't see my daughter and I know my wife was going to the hairdresser, I could say, oh, your hair looks nice now. And it turns out she didn't go for whatever reason. So uh, <laughs> faking things like that, uh, it can be a bit dangerous. I have no idea if face blindness has got anything to do with Aspie's having trouble with eye contact. Generally, Aspie's, might be true for all Aspie's actually, really struggle to maintain eye contact. It's just too much information. And it may be when a neurotypical is talking to somebody, they're just naturally taking in information, whereas an Aspie struggles to look at a person because it's just too intense. May or may not be related. I've got no idea. That's all I've got to say, I think, about face blindness. If you've got any anecdotes about this or any opinions or even hair blindness, there doesn't seem to be much on hair blindness at all on the internet, I'd be very interested to hear it. So comment below. Subscribing and liking is also nice for me. Thanks. Bye.